G'day guys, my name's Dave Tran and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. And in this lesson, I'll be teaching you how to play A Whole New World by Naomi Scott and Mina Masood. Now if you want to learn how to play the version by Zayn and Xavier, then I also have a lesson for that, the link is in the description below. Note that both those versions are in different keys, so they are played differently on the guitar. If you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to take your guitar to the next level, then check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step by step guitar course. Now, for the basics of this song, you'll just need your guitar in standard tuning and you won't need a capo. The guitar I'm playing in this video is a Cold Clark Fat Lady 2 with Elixir strings. If you want to find out more, there's a link in the description. Now there are a lot of chords to remember in this song, so I'm going to utilize two really simple strumming patterns to simplify things a little bit. So for the two strumming patterns, we have a long one which goes like this, down, down, up, up, down, up. And we have a short strumming pattern that goes down, down, up. Alright, let's jump into the first verse. Now up here in the annotations you'll see the chords. Now if a chord is by itself in a set of brackets, that means you play it for a long strumming pattern. But if there's two chords within a set of brackets, you're going to play that for a short strumming pattern. Or because this is the first verse and things are stripped back, you can just strum those chords out once and have no strumming pattern for those shorter chords. So we're going to start with the D chord for three long strumming patterns. And then we have a G slash B chord. So that's the same as a G chord, except you just strum from the fifth string onwards. And then we go to an A slash C sharp. So to play that, your next finger bars across the 2nd fret of the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings and your ring finger comes and hits the 4th fret of the 5th string. That's A slash C sharp. Then we go to an E minor slash G. To play that, your next finger goes on the 2nd fret of the 4th string and your middle finger comes onto the 3rd fret of the 6th string. And whilst that's reaching over and pushing down that 6th string, you want to lightly rest it onto the 5th string so that 5th string is muted and doesn't ring out. So that's E minor slash G. Our next chord is an F sharp 7. So to play that, it's the same as an F chord. Shift it up 1 fret and then you lift your pinky finger. So that's an F sharp 7. Then we go to a B minor chord. So that whole shape just comes down 1 string. We are going to put our pinky back down, and that's a B minor. We strum that from the fifth string onwards. And then we have a B minor slash A. So to play that, our index finger just lifts up and comes onto the second fret of the first string only. And we're going to strum from the open fifth string onwards. That's B minor slash A. And then we have our G chord for one long strumming pattern, and back to the D for one long strumming pattern. Now, as I mentioned at the start, you can play those shorter chords for the short strumming pattern, down, down, up, but because this first verse is stripped back, I'm just gonna strum those chords out once as opposed to playing the short strumming pattern. And in total, the first verse sounds like this. Next we move on to the chorus, and again the same rules apply. If there's a chord by itself, you're playing that for the long strumming pattern, but if there's two chords within a set of brackets, you're playing each of those chords for a short strumming pattern. So we're going to start with an A major chord, and then we go to a B minor 7. So from this shape, you keep your middle finger where it is, you slide your ring finger up one fret, and then your index finger comes up one string to the second fret of the fifth string. And we're just strumming from the fifth string onwards. That's B minor 7. We then go to A slash C sharp and then D. And each of those chords is played for one full strumming pattern. For our next line of chords, we have an A slash G. Now to play that, our index finger bars across the second fret of the fourth, third, and second strings. And your middle finger comes and reaches of the top and hits the third fret of the sixth string. Again, 
as you're reaching over with that finger to hit the sixth string, you wanna to lightly touch the fifth string as well so that doesn't ring out. So when you strum all the strings, that fifth string is muted and just the strings that we want to ring out are ringing out. Then we go to a D slash F sharp. So I like to play a D slash F sharp like this, playing a D chord and then reaching my thumb over the top to hit the second fret of the sixth string. But you can play it like this as well. So we repeat those two chords through twice and then we go to a B minor seven, an E7, and then we go to a G slash A. And to play this, our ring and pinky finger go onto the fifth frets of the sixth and fourth string, middle finger onto the fourth fret of the third, and index finger on the third fret of the second string. You wanna mute the fifth string here and also the first string. And that's G slash A, which is played for a full strumming pattern. So the second line of chords in total sounds like this. Moving on in the third line of chords is exactly the same as the first line of chords. Then moving on to the fourth line of chords, it's almost identical as the second line of chords with the exception of the end. So instead of going to a G slash A for our last chord, we're going to a C chord and then an A7 sus4. So keep your middle finger where it is, lift your other fingers and put your pinky finger on the third fret of the second string. And we're strumming from the fifth string onwards. So that fourth line of chords, every single chord is just played for the short strumming pattern. And then for the fifth line of chords, we just have two long D chords. So in total, chorus number one will sound like this. Moving on to the second verse, and now we have a key change here. So obviously all the chords are gonna be very different. The structure is gonna be similar though. So we're gonna start with an F chord now. Now that's played for three full strumming patterns. And then we have a B flat slash D. So you're gonna take your ring and pinky finger, put it on the third frets of the second and third strings. Index finger is on the first fret of the first string. And we're strumming from the fourth string onwards. Our open fourth string is our D note. And then we finally end this line of chords with the C slash E. For our next line of chords, we have a G minor slash B flat. So we'll take our ring and pinky finger, put them on the third frets of the second and first strings. Your index finger will reach over and play the first fret of the fifth string. And you wanna mute the fourth string, have the third string open. And that's G minor slash B flat. Then we go to A7. So from this shape, just slide your ring finger down one fret and middle finger will come onto the second fret of the fourth string. It's A7, then we have D minor. Now I'm gonna play that with my pinky finger here on the third fret of the second string though, because I'm gonna need my ring finger for our next chord. Next chord is D minor slash C, so you take this open ring finger and put it on the third fret of the fifth string and that's D minor slash C. Those first four chords are played for the short strumming pattern, and then we go to a B flat bar chord on the fifth string, like this. You can play a B flat power chord too if you're uncomfortable playing the full B flat bar chord, and then we end with the full F chord. And that's it for the second verse, which sounds like this.
Right, so next we get to the second chorus. We're going to start with a C chord, then we go to a D minor 7, C slash E. So C slash E is just the same as a C chord, except you're allowed to hit the open sixth string. And then we go to an F, and each one of those chords in the first line is played for a full strumming pattern. We then move on to our second line of chords, and we're going to start with a C slash B flat. So to play this, your index finger hits the first fret of the fifth string, and we're going to mute that fourth string as well. So at the same time you're playing that fifth string, you need to slightly touch that fourth string so that mutes out. And then with your middle finger, you hit the first fret of the second string, and that's C slash B flat. And then we're going to play an F slash A chord. So that's the same as an easy F chord, except you're allowed to hit the open fifth string. So I'm just focusing on those four strings. That's F slash A. And then we repeat those two chords through twice. And then we have a D minor seven, a G seven, and then a B flat slash C. So to play this, take your ring and pinky, put on the third frets of the third and second string middle finger will go onto the third fret of the fifth string. You want to mute that fourth string as well so that doesn't ring out. And we're just focusing on those three strings ringing out. And that's played for a full strumming pattern. So in total for the second line of chords, The third line of chords is identical to the first line of chords, and then the fourth line of chords is almost identical to the second line of chords, with the exception of the last two chords. So instead of going to this B flat slash C, we're going to play an E flat 5 chord. So index finger on the first fret of the fourth string, ring finger on the third fret of the third, and then pinky finger on the fourth fret of the second string. We're going to focus on those three strings. We're playing that for a short strumming pattern and then we go to our B flat slash C. Finally, for the fifth line of chords, we finish with the D minor, and then we have an F slash C. So to play an F slash C, ring and pinky finger on the third frets of the fifth and fourth string, middle finger on the second fret of the third, and index finger on the first fret of the second string. So it's F slash C. These last two chords are just strummed once and held out, and that will be the end of our second chorus. So in total, it will sound like this. Finally, we get to the outro, and each of these chords is just strummed out once. There's no strumming pattern here. We're going to start with the B flat sus2. So we're going to buy our index finger across the first fret from the fifth string onwards, and our ring and pinky finger go onto the third fret of the fourth and third strings. So we're going to strum from the fifth string onwards, and that's B flat sus2. And then we go to an F slash A. So just keep your ring finger where it is from that first chord shape and pivot from there. And then our next chord is a G minor 7, so again keep your ring finger where it is, put your pinky finger down on the 3rd fret of the 3rd string, and then our middle finger comes onto the 3rd fret of the 6th string. You want to keep that 5th string muted as well. And we're just going to focus on those top 4 strings when we strum. That's G minor 7. We then go back to an F slash A. And that's the first line of chords. For our second line of chords, we go back to this B flat sus2. And then we move up to a C7 sus4. So move this exact shape up two frets, lift your pinky finger, and that will go onto the sixth fret of the second string. That's C7 sus4. And then we end our song with the F chord. 
So in total for the outro. If you want to learn how to play the version by Zane and Xavier, there's a link to that in the description below. So now I'll be playing through the song in its entirety and I'll have my good friend Diana lending her beautiful vocals for this playthrough. She's got her own YouTube channel and does some amazing cover videos, so be sure to check out her channel and subscribe, link is in the description below. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, to practice, play along to, and see how you go. Hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to take your guitar to the next level, then check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. It'd mean the world if you could hit that like button, hit subscribe, and click the little notification bell as well, so that you don't miss out on my updates. Please leave your thoughts, comments, questions, or requests down below, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.